Welcome to the Weaver School. Um, when you start being a weaver, you usually are doing everything alone. When something goes wrong, you have to figure out how to fix it. When you see something that you think you should do, you have no one to ask whether it's the right thing to do. So we all learn our little tips and tricks for handling all those situations together and alone first, and then we share them together. And sometimes um, you'll be in a group of people and they'll be telling you a special tip they have and you'll think, oh, that's a good idea. And then you'll go home and try it and it doesn't work at all. So with every tip you hear, you need to say to yourself, what will be the consequences when you're gonna use that tip? What will be the consequences of my doing that particular thing? And if a little voice says something bad could happen, then maybe that isn't the right tip for you. I'm trying to share here the things that I've learned, and I've learned them from other weavers, just like you'll be learning them from me and from other weavers, too. And I don't remember where half of them came from in the beginning, or I would be giving credit to the weavers who've given them to me. Um, I hope that you know that they all come from the shoulders. We all stand on the shoulders of the weavers before us, and all the tricks and tips we have come from somewhere else. Um, but these are the ones that I found useful. And I hope that you will find them useful too and that I won't tell you anything that you, um, you try out and doesn't work. And um, you'll all know that they weren't probably originally mine in the first place. One thing that happens when you first become a weaver is you become overwhelmed with all there is about weaving in terms of yarns, drafts, and there isn't any academic senate that sits around and decides what you should do. So you figure out everything on your own. There's no textbook that really tells you everything you need to know. Probably the most overwhelming thing is what yarns to use for what projects. So I have some examples here of, for example, this is a twill and here is the exact same draft in wool, in silk, and in linen. And in each case, the way the yarn is set is different, the way the yarn feels is different, and the intended use of the fabric is different. So you have to know a lot to figure out how to set the wool that's this heavy, how to set the silk that's this fine, how to work with a singles linen like the one in this piece. Looking at the rest of these samples, it depends on the weave structure that you're going to use, um, how close the yarns will be set which is their density per inch on the loom. Like if I'm weaving plain weave in 10-2 cotton, I would choose a certain density. If I'm weaving double weave with the same 10-2 cotton, it will have to be twice as dense. If I weave something that is um, mostly warp emphasis, you don't even see the weft in this piece, then I have to set the warp very closely. If I weave a plain weave napkin to go with that placemat, I have to choose a different set for that. In this one, if you look closely, there's even plain weave and twill. So the stripes in this napkin have to be set more closely than the plain weave parts. If I weave something that's all showing the weft, then that has to have the warp threads farther apart and the weft threads will be closer together. Sometimes I have to take into account the yarns I'm using. In this case, this is both wool and silk. And the point of this was to get the wool to shrink so that the silk would puff up. Here's all silk, and that didn't happen in this piece. And these yarns are at a different set from these yarns. Silks have wonderful qualities because they can often move out of their vertical and horizontal positions. And that has to be taken into account too when you determine your sets.